Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to lecture number 18 on measure and integration. If you recall in the previous lecture, we had defined the notion of integral for non-negative simple measurable functions and we had started looking at the properties of uh, this integral. Uh, so, we will continue this study of the properties of the integral for non-negative simple measurable functions and then uh, later on we will extend it to uh, this integral to non-negative measurable functions. So, topics for today would be properties of integral for non-negative simple measurable functions, continue the study of that and then define integral for non-negative simple fun uh, measurable functions. If you recall, we had the last property that we approved in the previous lecture was that if S n is any increasing sequence of non-negative measurable functions such that they converge to a simple a non negative simple function s of x, then integral of s is equal to limit of integral of s and d mu. So, that means, under increasing limits, uh, if the limit uh, is again a non negative simple measurable function, then you can interchange the uh, order of integration and the notion of limit. So, integral of s d mu, which is s is the limit of uh, um, s n uh, d is same as limit of n going to infinity of integral s n d mu. So, integrals of s n converge to integral of s. Let us observe one more simple property of uh, this integral. For any uh, non negative simple measurable function s, the integral s d mu can also be represented as the supremum of uh, the integrals of s prime d mu, where s primes are non negative simple measurable functions less than x, uh, less than s. Uh, this property is obvious because uh, s is less than or equal to s. So, uh, the supremum has to be at least uh, integral uh, s d mu and it cannot be more because uh, uh, s prime less than s implies that integral of s prime is less than or equal to integral s. So, the supremum this cannot be bigger than or equal to uh, s d mu also. So, this is an obvious property, but we will see later on uh, a extension of this property later on. So, next let us observe um, an another important property about the integral of non negative simple measurable functions and that is the following. Suppose s n and s n dash are two increasing sequences of non negative simple measurable functions both converging to the same limit. So, limit of s n x is same as limit of s n dash x. Then the claim is that the limit of integral s n d mu has to be equal to the limit integral uh, s n prime d mu. That means, if, if two uh, sequences of non negative simple measurable functions have the same limit, then their integrals also converge to the same values. So, let us prove this result. So, we have got s n is a sequence of non negative simple measurable functions, s n are increasing and also s n dash is another sequence which is also increasing and the limit n going to infinity of s n is equal to limit n going to infinity of s n dash. So, that is given to us. So, now let us uh, fix any uh, integer uh, positive integer m bigger than or equal to 1 and consider the sequence s n minimum s m dash. Look at this sequence uh, n bigger than or equal to 1. So, look at these functions. So, this is these are the functions which have the property that s n wedge s m dash is always uh, this is the minimum. So, it is less than or equal to s n for every n. Also, as n goes to infinity, look at the sequence 
S n wedge uh, S m dash. So, the minimum of S n and S m dash as n goes to infinity, S n is going to increase to a limit. So, it will take over S m dash at some stage. So, that means, this is going to converge to S m dash. So, this is obvious because S n and S m dash both the sequences have the same limit. So, at some stage S n will uh, cross over S m dash for every m fixed. Okay. So, we have fixed an integer m. So, that implies that integral of S n wedge S m dash d mu will converge to integral of S m dash d mu. So, once uh, and this is bigger than or equal to. So, this is this is less than or equal to integral of S n d mu and that is because of this. So, we have got integral S n d mu is bigger than or equal to integral S m dash d mu uh, for every n. Okay. So, that means, so this implies for all n large enough. So, that uh, implies that limit of n going to infinity of integral S n d mu is bigger than or equal to integral S m dash d mu for every m fix and hence because this is true for every m fix. So, this implies that this is true for every m fix. So, that implies that limit n going to infinity integral S n d mu is bigger than or equal to limit m going to infinity of integral S m dash d mu. So, we have shown that limit of S n integral S n is bigger than or equal to limit of integral S m s and because uh, now we can interchange the two. So, that implies similarly limit n going to infinity integral S n dash d mu is bigger than or equal to limit n going to infinity of integral S n d mu. So, that proves that the two are equal. So, this will prove that uh, so this will prove that limit m going to infinity of integral S m dash d mu is equal to limit n going to infinity of integral S n d mu. So, that proves uh, the result namely if S n and S n dash are two increasing sequences of non negative simple functions having the same limit, then their integrals also converge to the same limit. This will be used uh, soon. Let us look, look at uh, an observation that in general the class of non negative simple measurable functions need not be closed under limiting operations. We, uh, we showed that uh, sum of uh, non negative simple measurable functions is a non negative simple measurable function. And we also just now observed that if a sequence S n is increasing to a sequence in L plus 0, that means if a sequence of non negative simple measurable functions converges to a non negative simple measurable function, then the integrals converge. In general, for decreasing sequences, for example, this need not uh, hold or for even uh, the limit of non negative simple measurable functions may not be a non negative simple measurable function. So, to uh, uh, give an example of that, let us consider the Lebesgue measure, uh, measurable space, measure space R, L and lambda. R is the real line, L is the space of uh, the sigma algebra of Lebesgue measurable sets and lambda is the Lebesgue measure. So, let us uh, define S n of x for every n to be equal to uh, the indicator sum of the indicator functions of k minus 1 to k, where k goes from 1 to n. So, uh, this is just uh, it takes the constant value k on the interval k minus 1 to k. So, as is quite clear that as, as, as a, this is the non negative simple measurable function on the real line and as n increases this is going to be an increasing sequence that also is clear. And the actually it increases 
to a function which is equal to um, k on every interval k minus 1 to k. So, that the limit function is not going to be a, a non negative simple uh, measurable function. Of course, uh, it will be a, a non negative measurable function. So, the aim so, what we are saying is that the class L plus 0 it is not closed under limiting operations. So, uh, that says that we should go over to uh, a bigger class of functions namely the class of um, non negative measurable functions and define integral there also. So, let us define for let us will denote by L plus the class of all non negative uh, functions uh, x to r star which are s measurable. Keep in mind we have got a fixed measure space which is complete that is x, s and mu. So, look at all non negative s measurable functions on the set x and let us denote that, that this class of functions by L plus. And if you recall we had proved a theorem that for a non negative measurable function there is a sequence of non negative simple measurable functions which is increasing to f. So, for every f belonging to uh, which is a non negative measurable function. So, the function in the class L plus we know that there exists a sequence S n of non negative simple measurable functions S n uh, which increases to f. So, f is a limit of a increasing sequence of non negative simple measurable functions. And we know we are now just we have defined the concept of integral for non negative simple measurable functions S n. So, it is natural to define integral of f to be nothing but the limit of integrals of S n. So, we define so for a function f in L plus we define its integral with respect to mu. So, denoted by integral f x d mu x or simply by f d mu to be limit n going to infinity of S n x d mu x, where S n is any sequence in L 0 plus increasing to f. And the first obvious claim is that this integral is well defined, it does not depend upon the choice of the sequence S n that we take which increases to the function f. That is because just now we have proved uh, just now we have proved uh, the result that if there are two different sequences S n and S n prime non negative simple measurable both increasing to f then their limits are same. So, whichever sequence we take S n which increases to f its limit is going to be the same extended real number and that extended real number is called the integral of f d mu. So, integral f d mu is well defined. Uh, so, well defined. So, that means whatever sequence S n increasing to f we choose it does not matter that limit of that a sequence is same limit of integrals of uh, S n is same. So, that is called uh, integral of f d mu and because it is limit of integrals of S n which are non negative simple measurable function. So, each integral S n is a non negative simple measurable function. So, as a result the limit also is non negative. So, integral of a non negative measurable function f by this process is a well defined number and it is bigger than or equal to 0. So, now let us uh, look at the properties of uh, this that the class L 0 plus is a subset of L plus. So, that is obvious and uh, we want to claim that integral of S d mu as an element of S is same as an element of uh, L plus. So, uh, that also is obvious because of the following fact. So, we have got, um, so let us take S belonging to L plus 0 okay, and then we have its uh, integral, integral S d mu as a integral of a non negative simple function and L plus 0 we are now treating it as a subset of L plus. So, when uh, so if you treat S as an element in L plus 
then we can take the constant sequence S n is equal to S for every S and that will imply that integral of S d mu as an element in as an element in L plus is same as limit of integral S n which is same as integral S d mu as an element in L plus 0. So, um, as if you take a non negative simple measurable function as an element of uh, uh, L plus and look at the integrals uh, as a element of uh, L plus then that integral is same as an element of uh, the non negative simple measure. That means, that the new integral that we have defined is in fact an extension of the notion of integral from non negative simple measurable functions uh, to non negative measurable functions. Now, let, next let us look at the uh, property that if f is a function in L plus and s is a function in L 0 plus say that 0 is less than or equal to s less than or equal to f then integral of s d mu is integral less than or equal to integral f d mu. So, let us uh, um, prove this property. So, we have got uh, s a non negative simple measurable function and f is a non negative measurable function and we are given that s is less than or equal to f. Okay. Now, since f belongs to L plus implies there is a sequence S n of non negative simple measurable functions uh, such that S n increases to f. Right. So, now let us look at uh, uh, S n increases to f and the integral of S n d mu converges to integral f d mu. Now, Next, let us look at. Um, so, consider. So, observe here is uh, S and here S of x for any point, and here will be some f of x, and S n is going to increase to f. So, S n x is going to cross over S of x for some n. So, let us define B n to be the set of all those points x belonging to x such that S of x is less than or equal to S n of x. So, uh, observations that this set B n is in the sigma algebra S and because S n is increasing this sequence B n of sets is also increasing to the whole space x because S n is converging to f of x. So, B n is going to increase to s of x. So, these are obvious properties because if S n is bigger than or equal to s of x then S n plus 1 is also bigger than. So, that means, B n is inside B n plus x and as we observed that um, uh, for every x there will be some n such that S n of x will cross over S of x. So, every x belonging to x belongs to some B n. So, B n is going to increase to uh, x. So, now we um, observe the property that look at integral of uh, the non negative simple measurable function s d mu. So, that we can write it as limit integral n going to infinity integral over b n of s d mu. So, this is because s n is an increasing sequence s n increases to uh, b n is an increasing sequence of sets b n increases to x and the integral over a set is a measure. So, keep in mind that the integral uh, of a non negative simple measurable function over a set E gives you a measure. So, uh, that measure mu of that uh, measure at B n will go to that uh, value at x. So, that is same as saying that integral S uh, d mu is limit of integral uh, S over B n d mu. Now, on B n we know that uh, on B n uh, S n is bigger than S. So, let us uh, use that fact. So, this is less than or equal to limit n going to infinity integral over B n of S n d mu. So, that is the non negative simple function uh, one non negative simple measurable function is less than another then the integral of one will be less than the other. And now, this is integral S n over B n. So, if you replace that set B n by the whole space this will still be less than or equal to limit n going to infinity integral over the whole space x of S n d mu. 
So, and that is equal to integral f d mu. So, that proves that integral of s d mu is less than or equal to integral of. So, implies that integral s d mu is less than or equal to integral f d mu whenever s is less than f and s is non-negative simple measurable function. So, that proves this property that if f is a non-negative simple measurable function, uh, f is a non-negative uh, uh, measurable function and s is a non-negative simple measurable function such that s is less than or equal to f, then the integral of s is less than or equal to integral of f. And now, uh, as a consequence of this, let us observe uh, the property that integral of f d mu, which we defined as the limit of uh, integrals of s n d mu for any sequence s n, can also be represented as supremum over uh, of integrals s d mu, where s is less than or equal to f and f is s is a non-negative simple measurable function. So let us uh, prove this uh, property that. So, let us call, let us define beta to be the supremum of integral of non-negative simple measurable function s d mu, where 0 is less than or equal to the non-negative simple measurable function s less than or equal to f. So, let us call this. So, we want to show that integral f d mu is equal to beta. So, uh, let us prove uh, that integral of f d mu can also be written as supremum of integral um, s d mu, where s is less than or equal to f. So, to prove this property, let us define. So, let beta be equal to supremum of uh, integral s d mu, where 0 is less than or equal to s is less than f and s is a non-negative simple measurable function. So, we want to show that beta is equal to integral f d mu. Okay. So, now uh, one possibility is in case integral f d mu is equal to plus infinity, then we know that uh, f belongs to L plus. So, there is a sequence S n in L plus 0 non negative simple measurable functions S n increasing to f and integral S n d mu converging to integral f d mu. But now, in this case we know this is equal to plus infinity that means, for every uh, positive integer n there exists some n naught such that integral S n naught d mu will be bigger than or equal to n because this number is going to converge to infinity. So, this must exceed every n. So, there is n naught and this s n naught is less than or equal to f. So, we have found uh, uh, a non-negative simple measurable function s n naught less than or equal to f such that its uh, integral is bigger than or equal to n. So, that implies that the supremum beta must also be bigger than or equal to n. So, this implies, so this implies that the supremum beta is bigger than or equal to n for every n and hence that implies beta is equal to plus infinity. So, in the case integral f d mu is equal to plus infinity that implies beta is also equal to plus infinity. So, that is beta is equal to plus infinity is equal to integral f d mu. So, now let us look at the case when this integral is finite. So, in case integral f d mu is finite that means, and we know that integral s n d mu converges to integral f d mu. So, for every epsilon bigger than 0, there is some n naught such that integral f d mu minus integral s n naught d mu is less than epsilon. And that means, integral f d mu is less than or equal to integral s n not d mu plus epsilon and s n naught is one function which is less than or equal to f. So, this is less than or equal to beta plus 
epsilon. So, integral f d mu is less than or equal to beta plus epsilon and this holds for every epsilon. So, implying integral f d mu is less than or equal to beta. So, once again uh, uh, we have proved that uh, integral f d mu is less than or equal to beta and uh, clearly beta is less than or equal to integral f d mu. That is obvious because beta is the supremum over all non-negative simple functions s d mu less than or equal to integral of uh, uh, so beta is the supremum. So, definition uh, beta is the supremum of integral s d mu where s is less than or equal to f. So, integ so integral s d mu is less than or equal to integral f. So, beta is always less than or equal to uh, integral of uh, f d mu. So, hence this implies beta is equal to integral of f d mu. So, that proves uh, uh, another uh, way of defining uh, the integral of a non-negative simple measurable function that if f is a non-negative uh, simple measurable function, then its integral can also be defined as the supremum over all um, integral s d mu, where s is a non-negative uh, simple measurable function. So, using these two uh, definitions, let us uh, prove that uh, various properties of the integral. So, for every function f in L plus, we have defined integral f d mu and now we are going to look at the properties. So, the first property that we are saying is if f 1 is bigger than f 2, then integral f 1 is bigger than integral f 2 and that follows from the above definition itself because integral f 1 d mu, integral f 1 uh, d mu is going to be the supremum over integrals of all non-negative simple measurable functions s, say so that s is less than or equal to uh, f 1 and similarly for f 2, it is going to be the supremum over all uh, non-negative simple measurable functions s less than or equal to f 2. But if s is less than or equal to f 2 and f 2 is less than or equal to f 1, so s is going to be less than or equal to uh, f 1. So, this supremum uh, for f 1 is taken over a larger class and then that of uh, f 2. So, that supremum is going to be for integral f 1, the supremum is going to be bigger than or equal to integral over f 2. So, that follows directly from here from the above definition that this integral is supremum over integral of non-negative simple measurable functions below f. So, as a consequence of this, we immediately have this theorem uh, uh, that if f 1 is bigger than f 2, then integral f 1 d mu is bigger than or equal to integral f 2. Next, let us look at uh, the linearity property of uh, this integral, namely if alpha and beta are non-negative. Uh, uh, real numbers, extended real numbers, then and f 1 and f 2 are in L plus, then alpha times f 1 plus beta times f 2 belongs to L plus and integral of alpha f 1 plus beta f 2 is equal to alpha times integral f 1 plus beta times integral f 2. So, to prove that, let us, uh, so f belongs to L 1, L plus implies there is a sequence S n of non-negative simple measurable functions S n increasing to f and limit n going to infinity integral S n d mu giving us the integral of f 1 d mu. And similarly, g belongs to L plus implies that there is a sequence let us call it S n prime of non-negative simple measurable functions S n prime increasing to g and its limit n going to infinity integrals of S n prime d mu giving us the integral of g d mu. So, now from these two, let us just simply observe that if S n increases to f, then alpha S n will increase to alpha f and similarly, beta s n prime will increase to beta of g and integral of alpha s n for non-negative simple measurable functions is equal to alpha times integral s n. 
So, combining all these properties will have the required result. So, let us write just write it out. So, implies that alpha S n increases to alpha of f and limit alpha S n n going to infinity integral d mu will be equal to alpha times limit n going to infinity of integral S n d mu because for non negative simple measurable functions alpha times S n is same as alpha times the integral and that is equal to alpha integral f d mu. And similarly, limit of n going to infinity of beta S n prime integral d mu will be equal to beta times integral of g d mu. On the other hand, if we look at the sequence alpha S n plus beta g n uh, sorry, uh, if we look at the sequence alpha S n plus beta S n dash, then this is a sequence of non negative simple measurable functions and that increases to alpha f plus beta g by the properties of sequences. So, as a result we will have that the integral S alpha S n d mu, uh, okay. so let us write uh, uh, it. So, because of this we have the property that uh, the integral integral alpha S n plus beta S n dash d mu limit n going to infinity will be equal to integral of alpha f plus beta g d mu, but integration is linear for non negative simple measurable functions. So, this side is nothing but limit n going to infinity of alpha integral S n d mu plus beta integral g n d mu. And now, by the properties of uh, limits uh, of sequences, this is equal to alpha times limit integral of S n d mu plus beta times uh, sorry this is not uh, this is S n dash. So, beta times uh, limit n going to infinity of integral S n dash d mu and this we know is uh, alpha times integral f d mu plus beta times integral g d mu. So, integral of alpha f plus beta g is equal to alpha times integral f plus beta times integral of g. So, that proves the property that when alpha and beta are non negative uh, extended real numbers, then alpha f 1 plus beta uh, f 2 belongs to L plus that we had already shown also and now we are claiming that the integral of alpha f 1 plus beta f 2 is equal to alpha times integral of f 1 plus beta times integral of uh, uh, f 2. I have written for g, so that is same as for this. Next, we uh, prove the an important property and an extension of the earlier uh, version for non negative simple functions. Namely, for every uh, measurable set E, if we look at the function, the indicator function of E times f, then that is also a non negative measurable function. And if its integral is denoted as nu of E, so, nu of e is the integral chi e f d mu, where e belongs to s, then this is a measure, this nu is a measure on the sigma algebra s and has the property that nu of a set e is 0 whenever mu of the set e is equal to 0. So, let us uh, prove this uh, property uh, also and this property again we are going to use the fact that the integral of a non negative simple measurable uh, of a measurable function is given by uh, uh, as a limit of the integrals of uh, a sequ increasing sequence of non negative simple measurable functions. So, f belonging to L plus implies we have a sequence S n belonging to L plus 0 such that S n increases to f and integral f 
d mu is written as limit n going to infinity of integral s n d mu. So, that is by the fact that f belongs to L plus and integral of f is defined as limit of integral s n d mu for any sequence s n which increases to f. Now, for E a set in the sigma algebra s, because s n is increasing to f, so clearly indicator function of E times s n will increase to indicator function of E times f. And observe, we have done it earlier also that this is a non negative simple measurable function, it is increasing to this function. So, that implies that indicator function of E times f. So, this implies that the indicator function of E times f is a non negative measurable function. And because we have got the sequence increasing to this non negative measurable function, so integral of the indicator function of E times f d mu is nothing but limit n going to infinity of integral indicator function of E times s n d mu times integral of s n d mu. Okay. So, that is uh, this is how the integral is defined and now we want to claim that if we call this number nu of E as integral over E f d mu, then nu is a the claim is nu is a measure. So, to prove this let us uh, so what we have to prove is the following. So, to prove this is what we have to show that if a set E is a countable disjoint union of sets E i, E i is in the sigma algebra S, then we want to show that nu of E is equal to sigma nu of E i i equal to 1 to infinity. So, this is what we have to show. So, let us uh, start looking at nu of E. By definition nu of E, just now we saw that nu of E is nothing but integral of the indicator function of E times f d mu. right? And that, so integral of E f d mu is nothing but limit of integral indicator function of E s n d mu by the fact that s n is increasing to f. So, just now observed that. So, this can be written as limit n going to infinity of integral indicator function of E s n d mu. So, this is just from the fact that s n is increasing to f so, indicator function of E times S n will increase to indicator function E times f. Hence, integral of indicator function of E times f is nothing but the limit of the integrals of the indicator function E S n d mu. And now, this E is a disjoint union of sets E i. So, that implies, so let us write this limit n going to infinity of so, this I can write as summation chi E i of s n d mu i equal to 1 to infinity. So, here we are uh, using the fact that E is a disjoint union of sets E i and for a non negative uh, measurable function s n, if we integrate it over a set E, then, then that uh, is a measure. So, so, that is the property, so the corresponding property for non negative simple measurable functions which we had already proved is true. So, we are using that fact to um, uh, bring it here. And now, this is limit of uh, a series i equal to 1 to infinity of uh, sorry, this is a integral here, integral of chi e. Okay. E is union, so this is integral of the union. So, now, uh, I am going to interchange this summation and or uh, limit and uh, 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 summation y equal to 1 to infinity and that is allowed because all the quantities involved are 
non negative so this interchange is possible so i can write it as summation i equal to 1 to infinity limit n going to infinity of integral chi e i s n d mu and now we simply observe that this uh, last quantity is nothing but summation i equal to 1 to infinity limit n going to infinity and the last quantity uh, is nothing but uh, new uh, limit of uh, n going to infinity. So, that is uh, that limit is nothing but integral of chi e i f d mu because s n is increasing to f. So, chi e i times s n increases to chi e i times f. So, this this limit so, this limit of n going to infinity integral of chi e i s n d mu is nothing but integral of chi e i times f. So, that value you put. So, and that is nothing but our definition of nu of e i. So, that proves that nu is a measure on e i. And once again um, observe that here we have used basically what we have done is we have uh, used the fact that f is a limit of increasing sequence of uh, non negative simple measurable functions. So, integrals of non negative simple measurable function that sequence gives you integral of f and then so go to that sequence use the property for non negative simple measurable functions that property is true. So, and come back okay. and uh, uh, finally, to prove that nu of e equal to 0 implies uh, mu of e equal to 0. So, that is uh, uh, so, suppose mu of e equal to 0. Then what is nu of e? So, nu of e which was uh, defined um, as integral chi e of f d mu which was nothing but integral of um, chi e times s n d mu limit of that. So, let us write limit n going to infinity of this, but this mu of e being 0, this integral is 0. So, this is equal to 0. So, once again for a non negative simple measurable function, it is uh, integral over e is 0 if mu of e is 0. So, that property is being used once again here. So, this proves uh, the fact that this measure nu of e which is constructed as integral of chi of e uh, f d mu is a special measure which has the property that its null sets nu of e is 0 whenever mu of e is 0. So, till now what we have done is we have defined the integral of a non negative simple measurable function as a limit of uh, integral of uh, uh, non negative simple measurable functions because if f is non negative measurable it is a limit of non negative simple measurable functions which increase uh, to this function f. So, integrals of those non negative simple measurable functions is defined take their limit and define integral of f to be limit of the integrals of non negative simple measurable functions. And using this we have proved that this integration uh, is linear. So, the next uh, property we want to analyze is um, is this uh, class uh, how does this class of uh, non negative measurable functions and the operation of integral behave for uh, uh, sequences in the class L plus. So, here is the first uh, important theorem that we are going to uh, prove and that is um, okay. uh, before that let us just uh, prove uh, just a simple observation that uh, if f 1 and f 2 are non negative simple and f 1 is equal to f 2 almost everywhere, then integral of f 1 is equal to integral of f 2. So, that uh, property is quite obvious because let us write the set n to be the set all x belonging to x where f 1 x is not equal to f 2 of x. Then the whole space can be written as n union n complement and we are given. So, we are given f 1 is equal to f 2. So, f 1 of n complement 
uh, we are given f 1 is equal to f 2 almost everywhere. So, where they are not equal, so this set has got uh, f 1 uh, sorry, we are given that uh, sorry, we are given that this set n f 1 is equal to f 2 almost everywhere. Okay. So, where they are not equal that is a set of measure 0. So, mu of n is equal to 0. So, now integral of f 1 d mu can be written as integral over n f 1 d mu plus integral over n complement of f 1 d mu. This is by the fact just now we proved that integral over a set is a measure. So, so this is integral over n n integral over n complement that gives you integral over the whole space and mu of n being equal to 0. So, this is this first term is 0 plus integral over n complement f 1 d mu, but this is also same as integral over n of f 2 d mu because measure of n is 0 and on n complement f 1 is equal to f 2. So, I can write as n complement f 2 d mu and that once again is equal to integral f 2 d mu. So, integral f 1 d mu is equal to integral of f 2 uh, d mu. So, that essentially says that the integral of a function does not change if it is change its values on a set of measure 0. So, let us now come back to the property that I was uh, trying to state earlier. Namely, if we have a sequence f n of non negative simple measurable functions and f n increase to f that is f of x is equal to limit of f 1 x, then the claim is f belongs to L plus and integral f d mu is equal to limit n going to infinity integral of f n d mu. So, this is one of the important theorems uh, in our subject, uh, it is called monotone convergence theorem monotone because we are looking at sequence f n which is a increasing sequence is a sequence of functions which is increasing. So, it is a monotonically increasing sequence uh, increasing sequence of uh, non negative measurable functions increasing to a function f we have already seen that f will be a measurable function and it is non negative, but the important thing is integral of f. So, f is the limit integral of the limit is equal to limit of the integrals. So, that is the important property uh, we want to uh, prove for integral for non negative simple uh, non negative measurable function. Uh, the proof of this theorem requires uh, some construction and uh, we do not have time today to complete the proof. So, we will do the we will do the proof of this theorem uh, next time. So, uh, we stop here today uh, by having stated the monotone convergence theorem uh, and look at the proof of this in the next lecture. Thank you.